Hey guys, it's Rachel. Today I want to talk to you about something called Deep Point of View and this is something I didn't really understand until um, I got the edits back on one of our books and I saw the editor had edited this kind of point of view into our work and then it was a really light bulb click moment for me. I want to be able to give you your own light bulb moment and see if you're not quite using Deep Point of View in your fiction. And I've got three tips today to help you to write a deep point of view within your fiction. So firstly, what is deep point of view? Because it's really hard to learn how to do it if you don't actually know what it is. So a deep point of view is a subjective point of view. When, when you're writing, there are two can you, you can either be objective or subjective. Objective point of view is what you're aiming for, to go deeper within the character, to get deeper into their minds and who they are in the story. Um, it's, it's like viewing the world through their eyes as if you're inside their head rather than just a, a fly on the wall observing it. So that, that's what I want to talk to you about today and how to get that into your fiction because from a reader perspective, it always feels so much better when you're reading in a character's head rather than just observing what they're doing. So I've got three tips for you today to help you put that into your writing, even if it's just something you do in the editing phase. So the first tip I want to give you is probably the easiest one to do and probably one I am guilty of so much. Um, and it's using filter words um, or we, you might know them as weasel words. If you don't know what filter words are, they are basically like crutches we use when we're writing. Um, that bring the reader out of the story. So an example of a filter word would be Kathy heard the sound of thunder. John noticed the parking ticket on his windscreen. Or Patrick felt nervous before his meeting. The, the three filter words in that felt, noticed and heard. By using those three words, you're filtering your narrative and taking the reader out of the story. The a better way to describe it would be a thunder echoed around the house or thunder startled Kathy out of her sleep. For John, with his meeting, when he felt nervous outside, instead of saying, sorry, it wasn't John, was it? It was Patrick. Patrick. When he felt nervous outside his meeting, don't say he felt nervous outside his meeting. Show him feeling nervous. So, you know, what, what do you do when you're nervous? So Patrick wiped his clammy hands down his legs before he went into the meeting. Patrick's heart pounded in his chest. Patrick's hands shook. Patrick had to drink a glass of water. Patrick took a deep breath before opening the door to go into the meeting. There's lots of ways to show that your characters are feeling something without telling them. You know, uh, John noticed the parking ticket on his windscreen. You can simply put, there was a parking ticket on his windscreen or John snatched the parking ticket off his windscreen and glared at the parking official. It's, it's not telling the reader what the character felt, heard, saw or did or anything. It's actually putting them in the position of that. So and the, these are easy things you can pick up in editing. So I actually have a list of filter words because when I'm writing my draft, I allow those in. I allow all my bad writing in and then I do a search at the end for them and try to eliminate as many for them and it's not that these filter words are you know you can't have any of them in your book because you can but don't use them as a crutch constantly in your work so some examples of filter words are see hear think feel touch realize seem sounds like sounds feels like feels there's a whole list of filter words if you just do a uh, search on the internet for filter words or weasel words the, a big list will be able to come up and you'll be able to see where they are and just do a search in your own writing to see where you've used these words you know do a search of the word felt and see how many times it comes up and see if you can change that felt sentence into actually giving the reader what the character felt 
and that is a way of getting into a deep point of view because the goal of a deep point of view is to go in deep with the character so that your reader when they are reading um, your story they go in deep with the character too and then they get a much more fulfilling and satisfying experience from reading your book. So another tip for getting into a deep point of view is to internalise your character's feelings. So, and I know that might seem weird, but you need to feel what your characters are feeling to be able to portray it. So I won't give you any spoilers here, but the book we've just um, published, Dead to Me, in our Death Dealer series, at the end of book, th this is book three, so at the end of the book, Harper has something happened to her that's deeply upsetting. It would have spoiled it if we said, well, Harper felt sad and Harper cried uh, and sort of put it on a an objective view of Harper's experience of this event that happened at the end of the story. Instead of telling the reader what she was feeling, we showed how she was feeling through her actions. It, it was a sad event. So she, you know, she dropped to her knees. She obviously she was crying. And as I was writing that scene, I put myself in Harper's point of view for myself and allowed myself to feel all the emotions she was feeling. So I felt sad and, you know, I could feel it here in my chest, that sense of upset and, you know, the heaviness you get when something's upset you. My eyes were welling up as I was writing uh, you know my, I could feel it in my breathing you, you know what it's like to feel sad so I put myself in that state of feeling sad with her so that when we were writing this scene I could portray that sadness a lot better onto the paper because I was feeling it we've just read the Harry Potter series and a lot of this touches on the write what you know line that people say but I I think it's taken too literally that people don't understand write what you what write what you know means. Write what you know doesn't necessarily mean only stick to things you know because that'd be a pretty boring story. Um, when J.K. Rowling wrote the Harry Potter series, she has no experience of being a witch or a wizard. Um, she's never been to Hogwarts. She's never flown a broom. You know, she's never done many of the things that were in that story yet she managed to portray her characters doing and experiencing those things based on writing what she knows and i'll give you an example of that she talks a lot about suffering from depression when she was writing those books and the dementors are a clear example of that the dementors are these creatures that suck the soul out of someone and that is what depression feels like it sucks the soul out of somebody so by using what she knew depression she could create this other thing the dementors and portray it as a way that the reader would feel this as well because the characters say that when the dementors are at them what it feels like is it's sucking out their soul and they're never going to be everything's cold and they're never going to feel happiness again and if you've ever had any form of depression, that's what that feels like. It, it's like this, everything's taken out of you. You're never going to enjoy anything again. And so this is an example of she used what she knew to write the Dementors. And us as readers were able to feel and understand that and get an impression of what these Dementors were doing to Harry Potter and his friends. So my third tip of getting into deep point of view kind of comes in to this book, Story Genius, Write What You Know. I know this is a plotting book, but it does touch on how to get into your character. So my third tip for getting into a deep point of view is literally getting into your character's shoes, not just the emotion of the moment and feeling that, like I've just said before, but actually getting in to who they are and, you know, right down to the basic foundation of who they are, right up to what they do for a living. So, the, you know, there's two kind of aspects to this. I can't remember where I heard this tip and I, I don't think it was from this book, but someone said, you know, the character's voice is shaped a lot by what a character does in their day to day job. Or in their day-to-day -day life so a stay-at-home parent is going to approach a situation a lot different to 
a lawyer or to a doctor or to a bartender or a gamer what what a person does in their life affects how they view and react to the world and this is where this book kind of goes on because who a person is inside and the way they see the world is different from person to per person to person and i use the example a lot of you know you take two characters to a party one of them is an introvert and one of them is an extrovert that's who they are at the, you know the base of their foundation so the way they will view that party is completely different the the extrovert could go to that party get drunk dance on the tables hook up with someone and have a fantastic time be buzzing about it and can't wait to get to the next party but the introvert might hate the party because it's too loud you know they think what's going on what the people are doing at the party is just stupid that you know they feel maybe they feel shy they stand back everyone's getting drunk and they're not and they can go home and think i never want to have that experience again and so by getting into your character's shoes when you're writing a party scene you would write their different experiences so you, you know your character would if they're an extrovert then you might write them running into the party throwing their arms around their friend getting a drink having a dance and you're giving the reader a, an insight into what your character's like whereas if you're writing the introvert you might write them at the beginning of the scene you know they knock on the door they step back they're hunched up like this and you know they step in and they don't rush in they kind of keep themselves back to the wall everyone stay away from me so by just showing those actions you put your reader into a deeper point of view of that character and lisa cron goes a bit further with this in saying that that person's basic um i think she calls it the third rail so that person's basic thing dictates everything um and because it dictates everything your story when you're in a deep point of view is led through thing after thing after thing that happens to them so i'll give you an example of that so you've got a um, a traffic jam and there's two characters both in cars beside each other they're both going to the same office to the same meeting they're both going to be late it's a hot morning it's clammy in the car it's stuffy the air is all polluted from the exhaust fumes because the, you know they're in this traffic jam and so you've got two different characters and one of them is really calm and he's not bothered he does traffic jams he doesn't get bothered by things like this you know he's just like okay i'll wind the window down i'll put the fan on i'm going to play my audio book and just listen to this book and i've got so you know i get a chapter in before i get to work and he's fine and the whatever of course the traffic jam goes and off he goes to work and this woman is rushing across the street steps out in front of him and he puts on the brakes waves and smiles and ushers her on um and it turns out that when he gets to the office this woman was also was a new starter and she was late for work and she was rushing across and you know she comes up and she apologizes to him and they become friends and maybe got coffee dating if you're writing a romance you know this leads to their romance meeting um whereas you've got the other character who is angry for whatever reason you know maybe he's just an angry person so he gets road rage the the heat's annoying him it's making his skin itchy there's someone in a car next to him that's got kids and they're they're irritating him so he winds the window up you know he's swearing getting funny looks from everyone and just getting himself more angry the longer this traffic jam carries on so when the blockage goes for him you know he puts his foot down spins away gets ahead of the traffic because he's going to be late for this meeting he's already annoyed this woman steps out in front of him and he hits her you know because he's going so fast and so angry he doesn't stop in time and he hits her and so his story is totally different even though these two characters started at the same place and because you've got into those characters into their point of view and who they are you can dictate your story and push it forwards with them so deep point of view not only takes your reader into the mental journey of your characters but it can take you through a different story and a different outcome
And you might think this is weird because I'm talking more of like how a story goes on rather than being in the point of view. But when you are writing a story, you have to write the story through the lens of your characters. And that is how you get into the deep point of view. You have to see the the world, the, the fictional world, the way your fictional character sees it. Because if you don't, you can't put that down on the page and the readers won't see it either. And it kind of leads for this unsatisfactory feeling. A good exercise with this is to just try it yourself. Take two characters who are totally different in personality, you know, even just do the extrovert and the introvert and put them into a situation and just write a scene on how they would react to it. It's just a really good exercise to practice this kind of thing and explore the story and what comes from it and, you know, just see how that turns out. All right, guys, that's it from me this week. Um, I'll be back next Thursday with another video for you. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit notifications so you don't miss out when I post a new video and give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you next week. Bye.